Yeah, and we're here right now in False Creek, actually, right in Olympic Village. And we've got Allison and John here with us right now. I'm just checking for safety here, make sure we're crossing the path. Okay, it's all about safety, Allison, of course, as we're into those uh, winter running modes. And we're so lucky here in Vancouver. Absolutely, we can run all year. But we need to be prepared. We do, absolutely. And part of that comes down to uh, visibility, obviously, when the days get a lot shorter. And uh, not only looking for visibility in the front, but also the sides and the back. It's what they call 360 uh, degrees of visibility. So a light like this, I like because it's got the light in the front and then one in the back. So you're covered there. And then you can cover the rest of it with a simple light like this that has blinks or steady and then just attaching it to the side. So again, cars can see you from the sides, uh, bikes, pedestrians as well uh, from both sides. John also has it easily covered there um, by his headlamp that has the lights on the sides. And of course, making sure that we're also wearing nice bright clothing um, in addition to having those well lit Absolutely, pieces. and a, a good running jacket uh, or a vest if you don't have a running jacket or a, a light colored, bright colored running jacket. This one is wonderful because of course it has the glow in the dark. I'm not sure if you can see that here, Dawn, but uh, it's got these glow in the dark stripes all the way through and then a very bright color for running when it's light. And where we run is important as well. We've chosen an area that we've seen lots of runners and cyclists here um, and it's fairly well lit. That helps too. You don't necessarily want to be in a dark alley or in a real dark park as well. Absolutely, that is definitely correct. You also want to be looking at carrying a cell phone um, for just in case there is nobody around and you need to get a hold of somebody, you need some help, no matter how long the run, no matter how uh, well trotten the route. And you also want to uh, carry a little bit of money. I just throw it in my little uh, running kit there and I have it for each and every time I run, no matter how far I'm going and no matter how many times I've done that route. So many great tips this morning. We are running with Allison Ty throughout the morning on Breakfast Television. For more details, of course, on different uh, clinics and classes, you can check out the website. What do you say? Should we go for a little run? We'll Let's see you guys a little bit later. Check for safety. Okay. Absolutely. Bye guys. Look both ways. Trying to get fit and actually one of the cheapest forms, the least expensive forms of staying active. Allison, we're doing a little running and a lot of people, and of course most people don't run with a microphone in their hand. <laughs> yeah, not such a great form. No, that, that's the real cue that I'm a beginner, that's for sure. <laughs> um, let's talk about uh, some great beginner tips for someone who's watching right now and thinks today is the day, this is the year I'm going to start running. What do they need to do to sort of ease into it? Well, I think easing into it is the most important thing. So starting with uh, sort of a run-walk interval, you're not just going to go out there and run five kilometers on your first run. So think about, you know, getting in those long walks to start it off and then breaking it up with some jogging intervals. And so you're looking at doing maybe two minutes walking and then one minute jogging. And you should always feel like those jog intervals are slower than the walk intervals. Let's talk proper form and maybe give us a little demonstration sure, here. Sure, absolutely. So you want to stay nice and tall, but very relaxed is important. You won't be slamming into the ground. So just even being able to do this on the spot is going to help you in terms of getting the run going. So not too far off the ground. Not too far okay. off the ground, staying low and soft, almost like a cat Hands. kind of kneading at the ground. Arms bent at 90 degrees, swinging straight forward and back. You don't want them going side to side. Um, and then just nice and relaxed and tall is, is one of the more important things. Relaxed all the way through the legs and almost doing a little like a cha-cha step, as we say. And again, you should be able to walk faster than you can jog. And speaking of walking, if running is not your thing or maybe you're not able to uh, run, Nordic walking is a great option, right, John? Nordic walking is fantastic because it helps offset the strain onto your knees and your back. So very basic, how do you how do you use those poles there? They're very simple. The urban poles are uh, designed to fit the right and left hand and all you really need to do is reach out as if you're shaking someone's hand and then press down to propel yourself forward. So it incorporates the upper body, helps you burn more calories. And burns more calories than you think. By the way, they have a Nordic walking clinic on right now. Not too late to register, Michelle. For more details, you go to racketsandrunners.ca. Yeah, we're gonna hear a story of survival for lack of a better description in just a few moments. But Allison, just very briefly again, for anybody that's heading out to run, what are the key things you need to do to be safe and to be prepared? I think there's a big difference between running on the road and uh, running in the back country and uh, pretty much I, I thought that I was running on a backcountry road and it was not the case uh, it was much more backcountry and trail so running on the road things like uh, you know being visible in all directions carrying water cell phone a uh, little bit of food extra clothes all that stuff applies to both but obviously there's a lot more preparation exactly and so now we're gonna backtrack to what you sort of alluded to and what I sort of teased up um, your story of survival first of all tell us a little bit about where you were running and what happened okay well 
Well, I was originally planning a 40 kilometer run from Port Alberni uh, to Qualicum, where my mom lived. And uh, my husband was going to, we were going to the museum. He was going to drop me off on one side and then run back in on, uh, on the other side and meet me before it got dark so I wouldn't be running alone in the dark. Um, but uh, we got a little bit out, a little bit later than we wanted to and so to cut off the first five kilometers and the, the portion on the highway he dropped me off a little bit closer to the track so we cut it down to about 35 I was going to be running for about an hour and a half on what I assumed wrongly was going to be a backcountry road and uh, ended up being on the backcountry trails and just a whole fiasco. But I know that you had your stuff you had your phone you had all these things that you told us we need to bring so then what kind of went wrong there? I had I had prepared for a back road run and I was prepared for that and so you hear search and rescue saying that I, I was prepared which you know because you had your phone you had your them. lights I did yeah. yeah and I was prepared for a road run but I was ill prepared to uh, to encounter those conditions in the backcountry and it all comes down to researching your route you should yeah. not go somewhere that you haven't properly researched and I relied on Google Maps which is absolutely silly and not, not something that I will be doing again but everything else you had and I mean you kind of did the best you could but that is a really great tip um, and it just goes to show that even somebody who's got lots of experience this can still happen absolutely to you right absolutely. what is the mentality I mean I, we were now were talking a little bit off camera that there's that fear of oh my gosh if I call they're all gonna make fun of me and they're gonna yeah that, that's a thing that stops a lot of people from calling for help too I'm sure oh it absolutely does it's yeah. embarrassing nobody wants to be that guy that needs search and rescue um, but the one thing that I've heard from search and rescue folks time and time again after this event happened was that you have to call early and make it easy I had sent them my coordinates you know my cell phone worked up until kind of the very end so by the time the helicopter needed to fly in they they went to my exact coordinates and picked me up rather than searching through the brush for days and of so, course everyone wants it to end well which is it did with Allison. By the way, you've got lots of great clinics on at Rackets and Runners. For more details, you can go to racketsandrunners.ca. You know, we're enjoying a beautiful run here on the seawall. And Allison, you know, we talked a little bit about beginners, you know, keeping your feet down, taking your time, maybe, you know, running, walking. How do we sort of pick up the pace a bit for us? I think a good goal uh, to start off with is just uh, decreasing that walk time and just running a little bit more consistently. But if you feel like you are able to uh, comfortably pick up the pace, you can still talk while you're running. These things are important. You don't feel like you're really beating against the ground and you're keeping nice and soft. Start with that quick turnover and that'll actually increase your pace because you're just taking more steps. So a good way to do that is set your watch for a minute, count every time your right or left leg hits the ground and you're looking for about 90 times. And just to keep, keep those steps really quick and that turnover really quick and from there, then you can start to think about, you know, going a little faster and making those steps a little bigger. All right, so now let's take, I mean, obviously we all have goals. This is the time where everyone's got those resolutions. You say that it's all about setting SMART goals and you don't necessarily mean SMART like this, although it does count for that. What does that mean? It's an acronym and it means uh, that the goals are specific. So you don't want vague goals. Those are goals that just don't stick. You so want I want to run. I want to run, that's not yeah, gonna work. Okay. I want to run a 5K and I want it to be the sun run and I want it to be in April. Uh, you want it to be measurable. So that five kilometer distance, uh, you want it to be achievable. So if you've never run before a marathon a month from now is not a good goal. Uh, you want it to be results oriented and then you want it to be timely. So all these things, that's why setting a, a, a date for an event is really great because then you have that big goal, but then you want to make those little goals around it. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to run three times a week and it's going to be at 6 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I'm going to do it with Jane. Uh, and this is how I'm going to uh, progress the intervals slowly. And you know, there's, I mean, it's hard to do anything alone. The nice thing about running is it can be a very independent activity, but Rackets and Runners, you guys have lots of courses or clinics, I should say. I know the Nordic walking is happening right now. What else do you have on the roster? Absolutely. We always have our Learn to Run, so that's really popular. We, uh, we work with a lot of people that have never run a step in their lives, and they can join that group and get that guidance, and then we do that goal setting with you, and we, we do that programming. So you don't worry. You just show up. You have fun. You have people to run with, and then we also have our Run Faster group. So those are people that are chasing down faster times or doing longer distances or just a little bit more challenging stuff. Fantastic. More details on those clinics. Uh, of course, you can go to racketsandrunners.ca. What do you say? Should we finish off the day with a little run? Let's We're do gonna it. We're going to take a little break here on BT. How will the weather hold up for our outdoor runs? We've got more coming up. We better go on the right side of the road here. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs>